Welcome to IAS project. In this video, we will be talking about agriculture in Harappan culture. This is our second video regarding mature Harappan culture. You can watch the first video in the link here. Before we go into the lecture, let's look at a question. Consider the below statements regarding people of Indus civilization or Harappan civilization. Three statements have been given here and the question is which of the above statements are correct. The first statement is they reared cattle for meat as well as for pulling carts. The second statement is they reared both humped cattle and humpless cattle. The third statement is Harappans raised cattle for meat but not for milk. If you know the answer to this question, please answer in the comment section below. Let's talk about what was the subsistence base in mature Harappan phase. Subsistence base simply means that what was the food source for those people. So the subsistence base or the food source for Harappans was mainly from three sources. The first source is nothing but agriculture. The second source was hunting and the third source was fishing. In agriculture, they practiced both cultivation of plants as well as domestication and rearing of animals. However, we must note that people in mature Harappan culture mainly depended on agriculture for their food. They mainly depended on plant cultivation for food grains and on animal husbandry for meat and milk. So the majority of food came from agriculture. However, they still continued hunting of animals as well as fishing. In our previous videos, we have learnt that agriculture in this region, that is in the northwestern part of subcontinent was being done since Neolithic age. After Neolithic age, whatever the pre-Harappan Chalcolithic cultures were there, they were also doing agriculture. They domesticated animals like cattle, sheep, goat, pigs and other animals as well as they cultivated crops. For example, they grew wheat and barley. So pre-Harappan people were mainly farmers as well as pastoralists. Pastoralists means that they took the cattle to green pastures where the cattle can feed on the grass. So the word pastoralist or pastoralism comes from pastures that is green grass grounds. We know that mature Harappan culture was mainly an urban culture which means that many people lived in cities and most of these people were involved in occupations other than agriculture. However, mature Harappan people still practiced agriculture on a very wide scale. That is why agriculture was one of the most important occupations even during mature Harappan phase. And because of this agriculture, they got most of the food grains as well as meat and milk. This was the most important source of food for them. Hunting and fishing only contributed a very small part compared to agriculture. Let's talk about agriculture in mature Harappan phase. One of the most important crops was cotton. Cotton was grown in the Indus region from almost 7000 years ago. We have evidences that cotton was grown in Mehergad which is in Balochistan almost 7000 years ago. Mehergad is located in Balochistan. Balochistan is nothing but a province of Pakistan. So since then people continued to cultivate cotton. That is why when the Greeks first came to this region they called cotton as Sindon. Why Sindon? Because the name Sindon comes from Sindhu river. Sindhu river was basically the local name for Indus river. So as the cotton was being grown near Sindhu river, Greeks called cotton as Sindon. These type of questions can be asked in UPSC prelims exam. Moreover, Harappans were the first people in the world to cultivate cotton. So before Harappans, people did not grow cotton anywhere in the world. Harappans were the first people to grow cotton. Now the question is, how do we know that Harappan people grew cotton? We mainly have two evidences here. The first evidence is that if you look closely here, in this statue, you can see that this person is wearing a shawl kind of cloth. This statue basically is called as priest king statue and it was found in Mohenjo-daro. So this clothing item on the priest king statue is believed to represent a shawl made of cotton. Moreover, you can see some flower motifs also over here. So we can say that Harappan people not only grew cotton but they also made cloth from such cotton. Moreover, they also embroidered on that cloth. For example, in this picture you can see flower motifs. Motif simply means a design. Another evidence is that we have actually found pieces of cloth which were attached to a lid of silver vase 
and some other copper objects. And these both items were found in Mohenjadaro. So from both of these evidences which we found in Mohenjadaro, we can certainly state that Harappan people not only grew cotton, but they also made cloth out of this cotton and they wore this cloth. So that was about cotton. Now let's talk about the food grains which were grown by mature Harappan culture people. Wheat and barley were the most important crops that were grown by Harappans. Other than wheat and barley, they also grew rice, they grew lentils. What are lentils? Lentils are basically lens shaped pulses. So lentils are basically a type of pulses. For example, they grew black gram, green gram, they also grew horse gram. They grew chickpeas and peas also. Chickpea is basically chana and peas is nothing but mutter. They also grew linseed, mustard, watermelon, sesame seeds. Sesame in Hindi is basically til. They grew dates and they grew millets. We must observe here that all these crops were not grown everywhere within the Indus region. In some places, some crops were preferred depending on the suitable climate as well as soil. We know that ancient Mesopotamia was basically a contemporary culture of Harappan civilization, which means that both these cultures or both these civilizations were existing at the same time. So what were the crops grown by Mesopotamians? Mesopotamians also grew all these crops except rice. So Mesopotamians did not grow rice. Other than rice, Mesopotamians grew all these crops which were shown here. Even in the Harappan civilization, rice was mainly grown in the Harappan sites near Gujarat. For example, in Gujarat, we have found evidences of rice from Dholavira and Rangpur. Harappans were able to grow all these crops easily because they had the knowledge of monsoons. And because of the knowledge of these monsoons, they knew when the Indus river was going to flood and after flooding, when the waters are going to recede. So they observed that after rains, the flood waters in Indus receded in November. So with this knowledge, when the flood waters in the Indus receded, they sowed the seeds in November. And from November to April, the crops grew. And in April, before the coming of the next flood, they collected their harvest, which was mainly wheat and barley because wheat and barley were the most important crops in Harappan culture. Harappan people also cultivated ragi, which is called as finger millet. However, ragi was cultivated only in the southernmost parts of Harappan civilization, which means that it was cultivated in Gujarat and in the late Harappan phase, it was also cultivated in Maharashtra. At the same time, we must note that ragi was not found in any Harappan site in North India. So ragi was cultivated only in Gujarat and Maharashtra. It was not cultivated in North India. Now the question is, how do we know what crops were exactly cultivated by Harappans? We know this because we have found charred grains or burnt grains. By doing radiocarbon dating on these charred grains, we estimated their age. And we found out that these charred grains belong to Harappan civilization. So the study of burnt grains or charred grains basically that were found in the Harappan sites helped us to know which crops were grown by Harappan civilization people. We also have found evidences of millets which were grown in Harappan sites in Gujarat. So millets also were mainly grown in southernmost parts of Harappan civilization. They were generally not grown in North India. So we said that Harappan people grew rice, but Mesopotamians did not grow rice. Although Harappan people grew rice, the evidences of rice are actually very very rare. Rice and millets were consumed in Rangpur and Surkotda. Both of these are Harappan sites in Gujarat. Rangpur is located very close to Lothal. Lothal is also a famous site in Gujarat. Surkotda is located close to Dholavira. So we find evidences of rice only from these two places. Moreover, many scientists theorize that rice was not actually consumed by people but rice was fed to animals. We cannot say exactly whether this is true or not. But what we can say is, wheat and barley were the most important cereals of Harappans. Rice was not the most important cereal of Harappans. Rice became important only when Aryans came. So during the Harappan civilization, rice was not very important. Please remember this fact. And wheat and barley, they were consumed in Sindh as well as Punjab and in other regions also. If we talk about animal husbandry by Harappan people, then Harappan people domesticated cattle, sheep, 
goats, buffaloes, pigs, asses that is donkeys, camels, domestic fowls that is chickens. So all these animals were domesticated by Harappan people. And most of these animals, they domesticated not only for their meat, but also for their hides. Hides means skins, wool and also dairy products. For example, they got the milk and then they made curd out of this milk. Moreover, if we talk about animals like cattle, buffaloes, donkeys and camels, they used these animals for work purposes also. For example, they made these animals to pull their carts. We have found evidence that Harappan people used bullock carts also. Other than working animals, they also domesticated cats and dogs. Evidences of horse in Harappan civilization are very very rare. In fact, we only found evidences of horse bones in Surkotada which is located in Gujarat. Other than this, we did not find much evidence of horses. So we can say that culture of the Harappan people was not centered on use of horses. Please remember this statement, it is very very important. Because when we talk about Aryan culture, there we will learn that culture of Aryan people was centered on the horse. And horses were very important animals to Aryans. Because of these horses and horse drawn chariots, they were able to defeat the local people. But horses were not important to Harappan people. Whatever is the case, Harappan people did know about horses, but they probably did not use them. Harappan people raised two types of cattle. They raised cattle with humps and they also raised cattle without humps. What is a hump? This is basically hump. In this picture, above the shoulder of the ox, you can clearly see hump. So the humped cattle were basically called as Zebu cattle or Brahman cattle. Zebu cattle is actually the indigenous cattle of South Asia, that is Indian subcontinent. Let me give you some general knowledge also. Generally, only the cattle that live in arid regions and semi-arid regions have this hump. Because the cattle living in arid and semi-arid regions generally don't get water and food easily. That is why with evolution, what happened was cattle living in the arid regions started to store some water as well as some food. Food mainly in the form of fat in this hump. So because of the water and fat in the hump, cattle will be able to survive for longer duration even though food and water is not available to them. Food and water generally are not available easily in arid regions because in arid regions rainfall is very low. So because of low rainfall, water is easily not available. If we talk about cattle in let's say colder regions, for example like in Europe, they generally do not have humps. But cattle in Indian subcontinent have these humps. So Harappan people raised both type of cattles, cattle with humps as well as cattle without humps. We have found evidences of terracotta figures like bulls, plow, bullock cart from the Harappan sites. You can see terracotta bulls and bullock carts in this figure. These are two bulls and this is a bullock cart. These were basically toys for children. We did not find evidences of any actual bullock carts because most probably they were made using wood. And wood generally gets decomposed very easily. Because of this, we did not find any actual bullock carts. But we found terracotta figures of bullock carts. What is terracotta? Terracotta is nothing but fire baked clay. Moreover, we have also found evidence of ploughed field in Kalibangan. We will talk about this shortly. These cattle were not only used for meat and milk, but they were used for pulling carts, like it is shown in this picture. Moreover, these cattle were also used for ploughing fields. If we talk about features of Harappan agriculture, then the most important feature was that plough was used by Harappans. And what evidence do we have of this? We have mainly two evidences. The first evidence is that we have found toy ploughs from Harappan sites. You can see toy plough in this picture. We did not find any actual plough, which means that these ploughs were mainly made of wood. And wood gets decomposed very easily, that is why we did not find any actual plough. This also means that they did not invent metal plough. So Harappans used plough, but they used only wooden plough. They did not use metal plough. The second evidence is that we found ploughed field in Kalibangan. You can see ploughed field here. So in this field basically ploughing was done like this. Harappans also used irrigation because most of the Harappan sites in Gujarat, Rajasthan and Sindh are actually located in semi-arid areas. What is a semi-arid area? 
semi arid area and arid area is basically an area with hot and dry climate we say that an area is arid when the rainfall is less than 25 cm in an year we say that an area is semi arid when the rainfall is between 25 to 50 cm per year so this is how we define if an area is arid or semi arid or not so most of the harappan sites in gujarat as well as rajasthan in india are located in semi arid areas that is why irrigation was very important for them and we have found evidences of this irrigation also for example in the case of shortugai which is located in afghanistan we have found evidences of canals there in the case of dholavira which is located in gujarat we have found water reservoir you can see water reservoir in dholavira in this picture they built this water reservoir using bricks so harappans did large scale constructions for the purpose of irrigation and due to the irrigation system they were able to provide water to their crops another feature is that harappans also built granaries these granaries were mainly built on the citadel area of the cities these granaries stored surplus food grains by studying the granaries we may say that grain was probably collected as a form of tax from the people and after collecting food grains as tax, this food grain was probably stored in granaries. So, this is one way in which the rulers of Harappan cities might have used granaries to store the food grains. Another feature is that Harappans exported cotton as well as food grains to other regions. For example, we have evidence that Harappans exported both cotton clothes as well as food grains to Mesopotamia. So this was all about the agriculture which was done by Harappan culture people. Harappans got most of their food from agriculture. However, they still continued animal hunting as well as fishing. The animals they mainly hunted were boar, deer and gharial. You can see Indian boar in this picture. And gharial is shown in this picture. Let me ask you a question on gharial. The first question is, in which state or states in India do we find gharials? The second question is, what is the IUCN status of Gharial? The third question is, is Gharial the longest crocodile in India or not? So please answer these three questions in the comment section. So Harappans hunted these three animals. Harappans hunted not only for food, but they also hunted as an entertainment, that is as a pastime. Harappans also knew about other animals. For example, they knew about elephants, rhinoceros and tigers. All these three animals were present in the forests which were there in the Indus region. These three animals as well as other animals like bull and deer are often seen on Harappan seals. For example, if you look at the Pashupati seal in this picture, you can see a rhinoceros here. You can see a bull or a buffalo kind of animal here. You can see an elephant and tiger also here. So most of these animals were common themes in the Harappan seals. We will talk about seals in detail later. In Harappan sites, we have also found fish bones as well as copper hooks. These copper hooks were mainly used to catch fish. Moreover, Harappans also consumed shellfish and mollusks that they found in the sea nearby and also in the lakes and rivers. Examples of shellfish or mollusks can be snails, clams, etc. So this is about the animal hunting and fishing that was done by Harappan people. So this is the question which I asked at the beginning of this video. This is a hard question. Let's try to answer this now. The first statement is, they reared cattle for meat as well as for pulling carts. This is correct because rearing cattle for meat started in Neolithic age. And Harappan culture being a Bronze Age culture obviously consumed meat. Harappans also use these animals for pulling carts because we have found terracotta toys. So this statement is correct. The second statement is, they reared both humped cattle as well as humpless cattle. This is correct. The third statement is, Harappans raised cattle for meat but not milk. This is wrong because few years ago, a new research was done. And in this research, they found that whatever the pots that were being used by Harappans, on the inside of those pots, they found materials that came from milk and curd. This is how we know that Harappans consumed milk. So the third statement would be false. Since this research is very new, this is not given in many books. So the correct answer would be 1 and 2 only are correct.
If you like this video, please subscribe. You can download this presentation from our Telegram channel. The name of the channel is IAS Project. The link for this channel is given in the description below. Thank you.